Are you ready to build your network at lightning speed? Well, mark your calendar for April 16th through the 18th and join us at Connect. You'll experience three days of growing, networking, and breaking through your limitations. Look, you'll never be the same. So go to attend-connect.com to learn more. The number of business owners that still in an economy like this are not profitable. And uh, that's an interesting thing, right? If, if you're not profitable in this economy, why is that? How do you build a network, run a profitable business, and make an impact, oh, and have a personal life at the same time? That's the question, and this podcast is the answer. I'm your host, Chaz Wilson, husband, father of five, author of the book, Five Plus One, president and co-founder of Master Networks, Inc., a national networking organization. Look, each week I bring you successful entrepreneurs who will share success strategies of how to effectively build a network, add valuable wisdom to your journey, and help you succeed. Welcome to Connect, Share, and Prosper. Hey, welcome to this episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. Do you know what episode this is? 94. 94? Episode 94 of Connect, Share, Prosper. Welcome. Uh, make sure you state uh, where you're from. Listen, I want <clears throat> before I get too far in this episode, just want to say how grateful I am for all of you, there's some of you who are on this every time we go live, and I know it's a Tuesday. Usually we're here on Monday, but because of the holiday, uh, we're going live today on Tuesday. So I'm super excited about today. And uh, like I said, I just want to thank you because we're, we've done 94 episodes, pretty cool, 94 episodes of Connect, Share, Prosper. And that's because of you and your support and the sharing and all of that. So I, I, just, I just want to say that um, right out of the gate that I'm super excited uh, for that. Um, being part of something, you know, so many people have talked about, Hey, I want to do a podcast. I want to do a podcast and don't realize how much work it is. When I started this, I was like, it's a lot of work and I've got a team that can help me with it. And it's still a ton of work to put things together for uh, a show like this. So today I'm going to talk about a couple of things. We don't have um, a visiting guest today, but I've got a lot on my mind that I want to share and, and I believe it'll be valuable for you. And I have you in mind as I, um, as I think through the thoughts that are in my head. Uh, as I've been traveling the country, I've got another event. I was just in New Orleans last week. Um, I'm kind of doing this. Um, I got Ricardo in studio here. I've got this spring tour of uh, regions I get to go visit. And so I was in New Orleans last week, had a great uh, time with them in New Orleans. Um, and then uh, going to be in Florida this week, going to be with our Master Networks family in Florida. Uh, then I'm going to be in Tennessee the week after, uh, then Missouri, and then Georgia, New York. I got a lot of them we're going to be in. And as I'm, as I'm visiting these regions, there's things that come through my mind that I'm seeing, uh, and I want to share that with you. And I'm kind of going to give a little bit of a warning, maybe a voice of warning if, if I can. Uh, in this platform that I have to see some things that are happening right now in the business world. And, and I just want to give you a really big heads up. And if you stay and listen through this, I'm going to just kind of give you some counsel, if you will, on what I'd be doing right now, what we're doing uh, in the business climate that we're in. And uh, there's a lot of things happening. So uh, as you come on the show, make sure you type where you're listening from, share this episode to your Master Networks family is I'm just going to uh, share a couple thoughts and then I'll open it up as well for, for Q&A uh, as well. So we'll keep an eye on the, um, the comments here on Facebook. So as I've been traveling and visiting uh, with different uh, members of Master Networks throughout the country, there's a common thing that I'm seeing and it's a little bit concerning. And that is uh, the number of business owners that still in an economy like this are not profitable. And uh, that's an interesting thing, right? If, if you're not profitable in this economy, why is that? And I think what's happened uh, for a couple of things is number one, you've got to get really clear on how you make money in your business. So uh, I've had this conversation more times than I can count. And it's a little bit dis disturbing maybe is the number of business owners that I'm talking with who just still don't have clarity to how they create more income in their business, right? So it comes up in every workshop I've done. And, and for you listening, do you clearly know how to add more revenue? Now your simple thing is, yeah, sure, I just sell more. That's one way. There's additional ways to add more revenue. And so I want you to get clarity around that. There's selling more, there's increasing my price potentially, and there's increasing the volume or frequency in which someone buys from me. Maybe they buy a second thing from me Maybe they buy the thing that I sell 
more often than say once a year, et cetera. So um, I think that's an important piece to, you know, businesses. Are you clear about how you make more money? Number one, in this economy, I'm seeing too many business owners that just aren't profitable uh, and that's not okay. Uh, I also believe that on the horizon that things are going to change. And let me just give a quick shout out. Willow's Bend, welcome. Brad, good to see you last week in New Orleans and have lunch with you, Brad. And Kenzie uh, from Bismarck, welcome. Uh, let's see. So I see a few more hopping on. Um, listen, I'm going to do Q&A as well. So if you have a question, make sure you add, add comments here. So with business right now in this economy, and this, for most people across the country, it's a good local economy right now. And so how, how, how come we're not making money, right? So how come not enough business owners are making profit? And part of it is not just not selling enough. The second thing is how to manage. So if you look at my three money disciplines, one is make more money, second is manage it, third is multiply it. Under the manage piece, and this is what I told my partners recently on a call with them, is kind of that same thing. Welcome, Ashley. Good to see you on the call as well. And this, I would ask you who are listening to continue this, this, these marching, or not marching orders, that's not the right phrase, um, this mantra of, about what I'm going to share here. <clears throat> I think as business owners, and I told my partners this, I want to help each of my partners do better with the way that they're not just making money in their growth, but the way that they're managing it. Now, of course, I don't manage their money for them. Um, you know, I have to manage my own money and that's, that takes a, a lot of work in itself. So, but what I said to them is this, and those of you who've been to my workshop and came to Cashflow Mastery is setting up, uh, and I don't have anything I can draw in here, but if you can visualize, like most people have a profit and loss, you have income, expense, and then profit, right? Yeah. Do we have that little whiteboard in here? Sorry. I'm, I'm like ad living this for Ricardo. Uh, I think that's a permanent marker too. <laughs> that would be awesome. Live on Facebook, do permanent marker on there. Um, here, give me that. Just grab me the perfect. Everybody virtually give Ricardo a hand for jumping in on that. So what you have is you have income, right? Expense, and then profit. Let's see if we have something I can erase with. So income. I don't know if that even shows, looks backwards on mine, but income, expense, profit, right? That's what you typically have. And what happens is for most business owners, you get to this stage right here and they're like, there's never profit left. I remember there was a time uh, way, way back when we started this, where my wife said, she's like, you know, you're really good at hiring and having employees, et cetera, but you know, th there's never any money left here. Right. And so how do I, how do I have money left over? And so the way to do that, and I'm going to just give you a quick scenario for this, is you take the income you have and part of this expense line, part of this, this terrible handwriting, now you know it's for sure live because of my terrible handwriting. Under this expense line, you have a line for profit. By the way, are you watching this? Is it coming out? You can read it correctly. Okay. It's not backwards like it is for me. Okay. So you have an expense line for profit. See what happens is when you try to save it by the end of the month, there's rarely any left, right? Because your money gets assigned. It has a place it goes. And if it doesn't, it flows like water and it finds a leak and it's going to find its way out. And so that's why it's so important to make sure that you have it designated. So one of the simplest ways to do that is to have what uh, Ryan Lee taught at our cash flow mastery is have a, for your business, having a, a separate bank account at a separate bank. So you have your, you have your depository account where your income goes in. You have a separate bank account. That's your expense account. That's where you pay your bills out of and you move money from that depository to the uh, operating. And from there you, you send money weekly or monthly from your depository to a separate bank. And that's your kingdom, right? You're building a kingdom. That's your kingdom's cash. <clears throat> so right now, uh, for, for example, I operate everything for my businesses at Wells Fargo. And then I have a separate bank where I have an account for kingdoms cash and I send that money over there. Right. And right now I'm sending it weekly. And if you can't send it weekly, send it monthly, but send something no matter what. Now, some of you are already feeling like Chaz, I know it's tight. Like it's hard already. How I don't have extra money. I promise you, you spend money on things. Um, you spend money on things that 
because it's available, right? And in fact, most people don't balance anything anymore. They just look and see, oh, I've got 10 bucks. I can go to lunch, right? <laughs> like, so send it, send a fixed amount or a percentage amount every single week or month. So it's interesting. I have this amount that I'm sending every Friday that I transfer over to this Kingdom's Cash account. And I have, I've actually nicknamed the account Kingdom's Cash and then the amount that I'm trying to get to. And there's a reason why I'm going to get to in just a second. This is, you're going to see how this all ties together. The second thing you should do is out of that, have a King's Cash account. That cash is for you, the king of your business or queen, queen queen's account. And that's for you from a personal stand uh, standpoint. So again, I have all my personal bank accounts at Wells Fargo, and then I have a separate bank where this King's cash goes to, and I have a certain amount that I'm trying to get to. Now, that, that then makes your profit that you've heard, pay yourself first, profit first, et cetera. This is literally how you do this. For years in business, everyone would say, Chaz, you got to pay yourself first. I'm like, yeah, I get it. How do I do it? This is the tactical on how you do it. It's very simple. It's a very high level discussion on this. This is how you do it. I love it. Ashley says, this is perfect timing. We were just talking about King's Cash. Love it. Um, we have three banks, bank accounts. Multiple accounts is super beneficial. I agree. So uh, here's a couple benefits to this. Number one, I, so again, I operate at Wells Fargo and I have this account and it is literally seven miles the opposite direction of where I live. I, I don't have checks and I don't have a debit card for that account. So I can't get to it very easily. I can't go get that money. So here's what I would say from a personal, uh, from a business standpoint first. Now, if you have, if you have, recurring income in your business, right? You have recurring revenue, which I think you should all look for a way to create recurring revenue, either in your main business or have a side business that creates recurring revenue. This is a rule of thumb. Please understand what I'm about to share with you. I typically would say in your kingdom's cash, you should have one and a half months a worth of operating expenses in your kingdom's cash account. If you have recurring revenue, if you don't have recurring revenue, then you need a minimum of three months of operating expenses. So if your operating expense is 10,000, okay, then you need 30,000 in that uh, kingdom's cash account. Now, this is why I'm bringing this up. From a personal standpoint, right, you're gonna take some of that and pay yourself as king's or queen's cash. And in my estimation, you know, there's other people who teach financial, financial wealth building, et cetera. And they say, you know, you need that reserve, that emergency reserve of a thousand dollars. And I'm going to tell you, I think that's a false positive. I love what Matt Monero, uh, his book, uh, I think it's entitled, you need more money, <laughs> like frankly, just straight to the point. And Matt says it's a false positive. And I'm going to share with you why that's a false positive. My rule of thumb that I, I tell people to is 10,000 minimum emergency, like a thousand anymore. Like you, your car could break down and a thousand isn't even going to cover it, right? Uh, get sick, a thousand's not going to cover much of anything, right? You can blow that in five minutes at a, at a hospital. So you, in my opinion, what I'm teaching people is 10,000 is the minimum. And I know that can feel very, very um, overwhelming if you have zero right? Uh, is to get to 10,000. But I'm working with people who are putting $100 a week or $50 a week aside. And, they're, and then now they're getting excited as they start to see it build, create the habit. Um, what should your accounts, King's Cash Emergency Fund be for B before you do outside investments? So this is kind of what I'm answering, right? So it, it varies. This is a personal decision, but I think at a bare minimum, you need to have 10,000 minimum right? And then you may, depending on how you, you get paid, if you're, if you're the sole income provider, I think you could take very much the same thing. If your business pays you pretty regularly, then you may only need one and a half months in your King's cash. But if you're not, if, you're, if your business is very cyclical and your pay is as well, then I would say you need three months of your personal operating expenses minimum in that bank account before you decide to go invest uh, above that. But beyond that, I think as Ryan Lee talks about, the bank has two things in every bank. And next time you go to your bank, look at this. 
it has cameras. And I recently took a photo when I was at the bank. It has cameras and a bowl of suckers because we're all suckers when we keep giving the bank our money and then they watch us on those cameras as we walk out, sucker in our mouth, realizing we just gave them all our money and then what they do with it and how they use it. So to Ashley, to answer your question, um, I would say uh, for a business like uh, you guys have where it's uh, remodeling, construction, et cetera, I would do a minimum of three months of your personal operating expenses, minimum. And then once above that, uh, look to invest that cash. Um, and, and, and then that goes into the multiply section, right? How do you multiply it? And I really think there's two, two ways to do that because I multiply for cash flow and that's uh, other businesses and uh, real estate. Now, remember your business is your greatest asset. If you own a business, that's your greatest asset. That's the thing that's going to pay you more cash. So how do you invest in your business? Maybe you buy more things, et cetera. But I think the other way you invest in your business is investing in you as the asset of that business, like events, seminars, coaching, training, et cetera. The more that I invest in that, the greater return I see for my business, which then flows the cash through to these accounts that do this. Now, uh, the reason I bring this up is this, is I think that false positive is real. So last year, and I've shared this with some of you last year, I got to a place uh, personally where my King's Cash account for my personal kingdom that I'm building was doing quite well. I mean, it had been at a place that I'd never had that kind of, I mean, it was beyond the amounts I just shared with you here, way beyond the three months. And I have recurring revenue and multiple businesses. And it, it, it was a place that liquid I had never really been at in my life. And I was feeling really good. And that's the problem. I got to this false positive. Now it wasn't the economy that, that shifted it, which I'm going to get to in a second. It was personal things that shifted it for me. I had personal things in my life and and with my family that required me to spend that money. And I, I see it as a blessing that I had it, but that was the key phrase, how quickly that went. And so like I'm talking nearly six figures in a bank account that went like that over a few months. And it made me realize that that was sort of a false positive and that I really needed to keep growing and keep pushing that number. So now as I rebuild that and I'm, on, I'm doing well rebuilding that, I've set a new benchmark. See, what happens is we say, and that's why I think it's, it's actually down, downright false advice to say, hey, all you need is that $1,000 emergency fund and you're good. That's where you start. Guys, that's a false positive because what happens is people get the $1,000, they put it aside and they don't build beyond that. And then they start spending and consuming. They get into consumer mindset and they're not, they're not building any for future wealth. And the reason I bring this up is I think in business, there's two problems I see right now. One is people aren't selling enough. They're doing just enough to get by. They're not pushing beyond to create more revenue. Or if they are creating revenue, they're still in consumption mindset and they're not putting it aside when the economy changes. And there's too many people right now who are doing well, who won't be around in say four or five, seven years when the economy, whenever it does shift, and it will, it'll shift again. They won't be around. And I, my hope and the reason why I'm sharing this message is I don't want that to be you. And so if you're listening to this right now, it's time to take a serious audit. And the good news is you can make just a few changes, simple changes, right? And don't, don't say like, I don't, I don't take well to the like chance I can't afford to put money aside. No, you can. $50, $25. I don't care what it is. Start the habit. Start the habit of get the separate bank account. Write yourself a check from your business. Mobile deposit into that account and leave it alone. 25 bucks, whatever it is. Then tear up the check. It's gone. Now it's in that, it's in your kingdom's cash account. Create a habit. Put it on your calendar because if it's not on your calendar, it does not exist, right? So, my fear is that I see too many businesses who are not preparing for the future. And maybe some of you were young and weren't, didn't live through 2008, 9, 10, 11, et cetera, or you were in an industry where it didn't really affect you. But I can tell you, I mean, it affected me hard. And now does that mean I could get caught in it again? Sure. And so I'm trying everything I can right now to prepare my companies personally, 
Um, and I just feel this sense of urgency to share that message with you to make sure you're preparing. Every sale you get, I told my partners uh, on a call recently, every payment they get for master networks, they should take a portion of that and put it in their, their king or queen's cash and just set it aside. Just set it aside as a small portion. If nothing else, think about it this way. When the, when the economy constricts, right, and markets constrict and contract, and you're now as, uh, who was, who's on my show? Uh, Bobby Castro. Um, stack it and rack it. Is that what he said? Rack it and stack it. I can't remember what he said. He's trademarked it, so I should probably figure out what it was. Um, put it aside. And he said, he said, even said, he said to me privately, he said, Chaz, if you're not in the real estate game, acquiring property right now, don't worry about it. Stack the cash. And when the market constricts, or if you're not buying businesses right now, don't worry about it. Stack the cash. And when the market constricts, you're going to be in a position to get it on pennies on the dollar. And that's why you'll see the, the phrase, the wealthy get wealthier. Well, it's because they were smart right now. And so my challenge to you is what do you need to do right now to build your kingdom's cash and your king's cash so that you're prepared for that coming up, okay? So I hope that message uh, lands. Uh, for If it's just for one person, uh, that was what was on my heart today to share with each of you uh, and, and share this message out. You know, this is at Master Networks what we teach. This is the kind of stuff we talk to others about. And this is why at Master Networks, we believe a network is important, right? While I just talked about money, one of the things that helps you grow that money is having a huge network. Like, would you rather have a million dollars or a million friends? Some of you right now would say million dollars and I get it. But the answer really is I want a million friends because that million friends will pay me at least a million dollars over time and for a long time, right? And when the market constricts, that's where the network really comes into play, all right? So uh, we'll open it up just for a minute for Q&A. If anyone has a question, it could be about anything, uh, related, but particularly if you have something related to the topic uh, that I just shared today on this, I kind of like these solo episodes, allow me to just kind of speak some truth than to just interview um, as well. We also have some cool guests coming up for the next few episodes. Uh, I'll just uh, announce and let kind of let the cat out of the bag on a future episode coming up. My wife is going to be one of the guests. She's going to talk about uh, what's it like to be married to, live with, and, and run a family with an insane person like me. And so she's going she's gonna to share that on an upcoming episode as well. Uh, we have some other really cool guests coming up on the show uh, as well. All right. Any questions? Any questions? I know it's always hard on Facebook because people don't want to leave their question. Um, no judgment, of course. Do you have your King's Cash account? Do you have your Kingdom's Cash account? Do you have that set up? Do you have it set up at a separate bank so you can't transfer funds in between? If you have your King's, I know Ashley said they do. If you have your King's Cash account set up, go ahead and put it in there. Or if you don't, put by when you will have it set up. It's a big deal, guys. It's a really big deal. Have it set up for you, okay? So listen, um, Super appreciate you being part of this. This was episode 94. We will soon be at 100 episodes and I couldn't do it without you. Uh, make sure that um, as this uh, season of Connect starts, make sure you get folks uh, invited to Connect because this is where they're gonna learn this. We're gonna have Ryan Lee who is with me at Cashflow Mastery. He's gonna be one of our keynote speakers uh, at Connect. So I just, I just basically announced that. And uh, we have some more uh, speakers we're gonna be announcing later today and up later this week. So looking forward to seeing all of you connect. If you don't have your tickets, go to attend-connect.com, get your tickets. We are now 45% sold out. We will sell out shortly. Uh, all VIP is sold out uh, and we're moving in that direction. So look forward to seeing you all at connect. Thank you for being on this episode of Connect Share Prosper. Until next time, look forward to seeing you. And uh, again, hopefully this message inspires you and motivates you to do something different with your financial future to build from there. So thank you, Victoria. Yes, he is great and uh, appreciate that. So we'll see you next time on Connect Share Prosper. Until then, be well.
Are you ready to build your network at lightning speed? Well, mark your calendar for April 16th through the 18th and join us at Connect. You'll experience three days of growing, networking, and breaking through your limitations. Look, you'll never be the same. So go to attend-connect.com to learn more.